Hi, my name is Paul from High School Physics Explained and today I'm going to show you how you can determine the speed of light using a microwave and some chocolate. I'm also going to go through the physics of it and also explain how Lewis Essen used this very similar setup to determine the speed of light in the early 50s that became the standard for the speed of light at that time. So stay tuned. Before we put our chocolate in the microwave, let's explain the physics behind it. Now a microwave is basically a nice box like so, and it develops a thing called standing waves. Now the standing waves are actually three dimensional, and so we can't really predict exactly what the shape of the standing wave is, but in essence a standing wave is where you have a number of nodes and you have your classic standing wave like so. And what's happening, of course, is that at these particular points here, which we call the nodes, we don't have any vibrations in terms of the electromagnetic waves. Over here, we have maximum vibrations. And it is here that the heating occurs at the antinodes that are labeled at the top here. And so if we put our food into the microwave, the heating takes place at these antinodes. But if you notice that if I measure that distance there to that distance there, then that distance there is half a wavelength. From there to a full cycle to back over here, that is my wavelength. So if I get two hotspots right here, then I actually have half the wavelength. And by that, therefore, I can determine the actual speed of light if I know the frequency of the microwave. And in our case, our frequency of the microwave is 2,450 megahertz. So let's cook some chocolate. Now what we're gonna do is gonna place the chocolate into the microwave. Now, what I've done is I've placed a plate over the actual turn uh, motor so that the plate doesn't turn. That turns because it distributes the heat evenly. We don't want that. We only want it to heat it in specific spots so that we can actually measure those antinodes. So let's put it in, and the amount of time you put it in will depend on your microwave. So I'm going to do about 30 seconds or so. So let's have a look at our results. And we've got some pretty good results. Let's have a look at it. Now, if you look closely enough, you can see the spots here that are going to be our antinodes. This is area where we have maximum vibration and the water molecules are vibrating really uh, wildly due to the uh, fluctuations of our microwaves. And so we have these hot spots here. And in between, we have our nodes. So we are now in a position to measure the distance between the two hot spots. And so, of course, there is a little bit of an uncertainty. So we'll do our best to work out roughly where the middle is. And I'm going to guess my value in the middle is somewhere between 5.5 and 6. I'm going to check this one over here. Maybe a little bit over 5.5, maybe 5.6, maybe 5.7. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's move that and now do our calculations. So here is our standing wave like so. Just roughly drawn. We know that this is our antinodes and this is where the heating occurs. And we know that is 5.7 centimeters. So our wavelength is double that. So our wavelength ends up being 11.4 centimeters, or of course we say 0 0.114 meters. If we now work out the frequency, that's actually given to us. The frequency in this case is 2450 megahertz. I'm going to just leave it like that. So the speed of light is going to be equal to simply the product of those two values, f lambda, and we get 2450 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6, because that's mega, and then we multiply that by our 0.114, and if we get our calculator out, we're going to get 2450 times 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by our 0.114, and then we get a value of 2.793 by 10 to the power of 8, meters per second. Now, we know that in one significant digit or even two significant digits, the speed of light is actually equal to 3.0 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So if I actually quickly work out the percentage error by subtracting 3 by 10 to the power of 8 and then dividing it by 3 by 10 to the power of 8, 
I'm getting a value in our case of approximately, in terms of our error, plus or minus 0.07, or in other words, 7% error. Now that's pretty good in, turn it, in determining the speed of light. So now you, we've demonstrated how you can determine the speed of light by using a microwave and something that melts. In this case, chocolate, but you can also use cheese, you can use marshmallows. But in fact, this experiment actually models an experiment done by Lewis Essen in the late 40s and early 50s to determine uh, the most precise value for the speed of light. Now, obviously, he had a far more accurate way of doing that, and we're going to explain that right now. Now, during World War II, the development of the radar required a more precise value for the speed of light than the value that Mikkelsen, or Mikkelsen and Morley fame, had determined in the early 30s. So, Lewis Essen developed an experiment using a microwave cavity and the concept of standing waves to determine the speed of light. And he believed that it would give a better result than the time of flight method that previous scientists had done previously. And the principle he employed inspired the chocolate experiment I had demonstrated earlier. Now, if you can set up a cavity that allows the setup of microwaves forming standing waves and you have precise dimensions of that cavity and you know the frequencies of your microwaves, then you can precisely measure the nodes and antinodes and therefore determine pretty relatively straightforward the wavelength and thus the speed of light. And like microwaves, that's the speed of any form of electromagnetic radiation. Now, the setup is relatively straightforward. In fact, I did it. However, to do it with high enough precision, well, that's the hard part. So what's the physics behind it? Well, the setup wasn't new. In fact, Heinrich Hertz was able to provide evidence for Maxwell's theories by setting up standing waves with radio waves. And you can check out my video on that. In essence, Essen had a copper resonator in which he set up standing waves. And it also contained a receiver that could measure the resonance when it occurred. That is, the production of standing waves as you can see in the diagram. The issue he first struggled with was knowing the precise dimensions, since the nodal points actually penetrated a little into the copper material. Now, fortunately, there was underlying theories as to the amount, so he got Alan Turing to help him with the calculations. He then set up various known frequencies in his resonator, and then a signal could be picked up when resonance was achieved. So, as a result, he was able to determine the nodes and antinodes. And knowing the dimensions of the box, he determined the wavelength of the wave and thus determined the speed of the wave. And he got 299,792 plus or minus 3 kilometers per second. That's good. Everyone's happy, right? Well, no, because he got a value that was actually a little higher than the known velocity of light. So there was some controversy. So he repeated the experiment in 1950 with greater precision and got 299,792.5 kilometers per second, plus or minus one. Now this was adopted as the standard value for the speed of light in 1957. Now later measurements got even better values with greater precision, but eventually in 1983, the speed of light was actually set to a specific value of exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. Why? Well, that's a bigger story and it goes on how we determine measurement standards. And it will be the subject of my next video on light, so stay tuned for that. So I hope that has helped you understand how we determine the speed of light in terms of how Lewis Essen did it and how you can model that by using some chocolate and a microwave. Please like, share and subscribe and make a comment down below if this video has been very helpful for you. In any case, my name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. All that's left to do now is, of course, enjoy some chocolate. Bye for now.